So Lloyd, what are we talking about today? We're, we're going to talk about forces in the golf swing. Hold that up, let me see. Here. What is a force, Lloyd, do you know? Yeah, well, it is something. So it's how much power you're using to try and hit the ball into the hole. And if you get it in your first try, then that means you got a par one. So what is a force? Dictionary, here we go. Force. So a force is a physical strength or energy accompanying action or movement. So physical strength or energy, energy accompanying action or movement. So it's an energy accompanying an action or a force. Right Lloyd, little putt. Energy accompanying action or force. So Lloyd's going to do a little putt. On you go Lloyd. And this is how you do it. On you go. That's it. So, that ball is rolled. So Lloyd's action created the energy onto the golf ball. So applying energy onto the golf ball through force. Um, that makes sense. The force you apply to the golf ball is going to make the golf ball fly. Put spin onto it. Fair enough. Because we're applying energy to it through force. Um, that has to be efficient though. So we're going to have to find a way or discuss a way in which that's efficient. So if we create a force onto something like Lloyd did with his putt, his putter created force onto the golf ball, applied energy onto it, so therefore the ball moved. So the force we apply has to have a resultant force. So we have to apply an efficient force in the first place to make the force on the golf ball be efficient. Walking in the woods. Scary. He's away, he's gone. So to you apply a force efficiently, we have to apply a force that creates another force, as I've just mentioned. So in the golf swing, let's imagine, let's let's think of a bad force. So we come over the top, get the top of my swing, and then my right shoulder applies a force out that way. And the resultant force of that is the club comes to the left and we get slices and over the top and not good shots at all. So we need to apply a force that is efficient. So the forces we're going to talk about today, there's a couple. We're going to talk about when we take the club back. We talked about this before in a previous video, my Eureka moment. We take the club back. When I come through now, my left hip is going to go upwards. So my left hip will go upwards and behind me. So we'll go up and behind. I come down, left hip goes up and behind. So this force going up and this way has to result in a force going out that way, which is the club head spinning out to the right. So I take club back, that take club back, coming down, hip goes up and behind me, and then the club head gets thrown out to the right. So that's one force creating another force. So that's angular momentum. Talked about that in the past. Angular momentum. So we talked about the speedboat. Speedboat's going along, the skiers behind, the water skiers behind. The speedboat continues at 100 miles an hour. And the speed, the skier turns their skis and they will catch up because they've the speed, the force of the speedboat has created the 100 mile an hour speed of the skier. He has then used that force and created angular momentum and is able to catch up with the boat, this is what we're doing here, the Eureka moment as well, we aimed left to get that hip up and out behind me, and that throws the club head out to the right. So one force creates another force, oh. angular momentum. You alright Lloyd? Yeah. Coming in to say hello? What are we talking about today, forces? Can you see yourself, Luke? Yes. Dab. Correct, I am dab. See ya! So another force we're talking about here, so my left hip went backwards and my club head went out to the right. There's another thing that goes backwards as well. So Lloyd, if you got up to the top of your swing and stop. Okay, and then come down really, really slow so we can see, stop there. So we can see his hip starts to turn left, his hands come left, keep coming through now. His hands come left but the club head goes out to the right. Go back up again. Great, so up. Hands come left, hips go left but the club head goes out to the right. Yep, there we go. What was that called? Um, well, you're trying to 
get your hands to the edge and you're going to hit the club to the right so the ball goes in the right order of the way. You can go. Are we on? Yeah. Okay, so as Lloyd was mentioning there, his hips went left, his hands went left, so his hands went left, the club went out to the right. So the grip of the club, when it goes to the left, the club head goes out to the right. So it turns, so this goes left, and this goes out to the right. Am I still in there, Lloyd? Yes. Yep, cheers. You're brilliant. So now we're aware of the forces, so left hip's going back and upwards, hands are going left as well. Back, left, same sort of thing. Um, or behind your body. And club head gets spinning out to the right. That, what that does, without you thinking too much about it, all you're doing is getting the hips behind you, or your left hip behind you, and your hands to the left. And that will create the club head spinning out to the right, but it also lowers the dynamic lie angle of your shaft. So therefore the hands aren't as high, or the handle of the club's not as high through the impact. So they don't come in as steep, so we now come in a little bit flatter. We also get a right to left ball flight from that. Just that understanding of how one force can create another force. The force you create has to be efficient. Guys, if you look up to the right hand side here, this little corner here, there'll be a little bubble. And you can click that to subscribe to my channel. Also get me on Twitter at SJohnsonPJ. And People's Pro Shop is my Facebook page. Dad, are we going up there? Yeah.